All right, here we are. This boiler's on just over half a bar and the heating is off. We're gonna put the heating on now and we're gonna see what happens. And if your boiler does this same thing, then you need to get it sorted. Otherwise, it's gonna break down on you very soon. All right, so I've just put the heating on, the boiler's lit and running, and we're gonna give it five minutes and we'll see what happens. All right, here we are. It's so after about, I'd say 10 minutes. So we're still lit and running and we're at two and a half bar, over two and a half bar, okay? Because when you heat water, it expands and the expansion vessel on the boiler is meant to absorb that. Um, that expansion, the amount of expansion there is determined by two things, the amount of water and the temperature you heat it to. So if I was to whack this temperature up, this is down low now to save the boiler, because I saw this a week ago, so I turned it down and said I'd have to come back so I didn't have any tools. So if we turn that up and give it another few minutes, that's gonna get higher and higher and higher and higher, okay? As that temperature of the water gets hotter, that pressure will just keep rising. Let me see if you can actually see the needle moving up. Yeah, you can. Let me try and not shake. There we go. Yeah, just by the temperature increasing, the pressure's going up. Now, once it gets to three bar, the boiler will let the water out, okay? And then your boiler will not work the next day because it will let all of that pressure out. So now I've turned it off, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna turn this down. I'm gonna turn it off inside. As the water cools down, that will go back down. And uh, one tip for engineers out there, if you ever go to a boiler and it's got say two bar in it, it's been running, you think nothing of it and you drain it. But when you drain it, you get you know, this much water in the bottom of a bucket, that is, that's telling you the expansion vessel full, full of water and failed. Because the expansion vessel, the water should go into it as it expands and then when you drain it, it all comes back out of it. So if you've got an eight litre vessel, you should get say six litres out of it, right? So when I drain this boiler now, in the bottom of my bucket, I reckon I'll have two to three inches of water, that's it. Maybe even less than that. And that'll be all that pressure in the boiler in my bucket. So let's get set up for that. We take this off, undo them two screws, get access into the boiler, take this cover off. Okay, so the boiler's turned off. The pressure is dropping down here. As in the power's off to the boiler. Pressure's slowly coming down as it cools. I've got a bucket there and I'm gonna try drain it from here unfortunately my hose isn't long enough we all have that same problem look how quick the pressure's dropping look how much water's in the bucket right now so I'll open this up a wee bit more one and a half bar and we've probably got an inch of water One bar. <clears throat> so this vessel's not completely flat. It's got some water coming out. Yeah. But you can see that's not much water in that bucket. I don't want to open this too much and have it spray everywhere, but I'll let this finish draining. And then we're going to get up here and find the, uh, there it is, the connection for the expansion vessel. The, uh, the Schrader valve. Right, there's a little bit there. Let's see how much pressure is actually in this vessel. We have to leave this open while we're doing this. Because any, if the vessel's flat and it's full of water, okay, you have to have an open point on the system. So you can pump it and the, the water will leave the vessel and come out into this bucket. <clears throat> so actually we've probably got about three inches of water in there not bad but you'd usually expect it to be sort of up here when you're draining a boiler you know a good 10 litres comes out of them let's get on that vessel I make my life easy by using a key pump it's on bar and I like to put about 1.2 in and that's where we're at 1.2 okay <clears throat> let me get this connected on okay 
Okay, got that on. And we are showing zero. That's pumped it up as the water leaves. That pressure may go down. Okay, and it is. See that, that's the water leaving the vessel. That's where you need the open point. Okay. We're down to half a bar now. See, the bucket's filling up. The pressure gauge has gone up. That's because we're compressing all that air in the vessel and the water isn't, hasn't left the boiler quick enough. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this is not good. If you see lots of bubbles like this, it could be that your vessel has completely failed and the air that you're pumping in up here is making its way down that copper pipe at the back there, a little tiny one going up the back, and is managing to come out of this hose. Don't think that's the case here, but it could be. Let's see if it stops. Our pressures remain stable in the vessel. The air vent's sucking in now at the back there. But that has stopped gurgling down there. We're holding at 1.2 bar. All right, look how much water's in that bucket now. That's all the water that shouldn't have been in that expansion vessel. Okay, so that's the that's you know where you'd expect it to be. So still at 1.2 bar. It's time to close this. Disconnect this up here. I don't know if you can see, but oh, here we go. Okay. So the Schrader valve has a problem, okay? The core is, the core is leaking. All right, so we're gonna to have to open this because we're gonna to have to pump that up again. And I'm gonna go and get a core tool, Schrader valve core tool from the van. So if you've seen my video on puncture repair, you'll know I have this kit. In this kit, is also where my, cores are in that. Get that. There's the removal bit there. So I'm gonna unscrew that and I'm gonna I'm gonna unscrew that on the boiler and uh, replace it with that one. And these are just the standard trader valves that you would get on a car tire or a bicycle tire. So I'll get the old one out, put one of them in. Hopefully this tool will fit here. Yeah, just, just, okay. So just, I will say you can sometimes get these working again, a bit of WD-40 and give it a good fingering, but it doesn't always work. And uh, I just want to get this done, so. Very awkward this, because I'm leaning in the corner and I can't get, there we go, got it out. I can't get my fingers in there because the flu's in the way. Oh, anyway. There we go, that's the Schrader valve caught out. I do uh, use the universal lube of spit on them simply because that's what I've got to hand right now. And the van is parked a long way away. Oh, that got very tight very quick. I'm hoping that's all right. On 1.2 bar, here we come. So, LDF, a bit of leak detection fluid on that. This is the one I like, and the reason I like it is because you buy bolt fluid and you can top it up. Um, 
I do have the aerosols, I do use the aerosols, but I do prefer this type. That does not appear to be leaking in any way. Let's get a, yeah, no big bubbles coming out. Get a cap on that, get this boiler filled up, and I'll show you the result of topping up Nick pumping up an expansion vessel correctly. I want to just mention one other thing. There is a seal inside these. You see there's a rubber seal around the outside of that point. That's a rubber seal. It's a bit dirty in this one. So if they let by a little bit, you can tighten these on to get people by. If you haven't got a call. Um, right, let's close this for the second time now. Give them a flick, sometimes the gauges stick. Okay, so if this pressure has reached three bar, okay, because you haven't noticed that you're having the problem, the safety valve, the pressure relief valve, which on this boiler is right at the back there, pretty awkward, not as awkward as some newer Worcesters though, um, you will have a leak dripping outside. So on this boiler here, because this is an outhouse, it just drips on the floor. But you'll probably have a pipe go through the wall in your kitchen, and then outside it will hook back to the wall. All right, that's, so if it sprays hot water out, it runs down the wall. If that's dripping, then that safety valve, they don't usually seal back up once they've started dripping. That will need to be replaced or serviced. All right, um, you will need an engineer for that. You'll all need an engineer for all of this. So this is a 24i Junior. There you go, you can see there's a flame in there. So it's back on and running. So to check that this has worked, we're now gonna run this for five or 10 minutes now, let's say after 10 minutes, if we haven't gone above, you know, one and three quarters, we can be quite comfortable that this is good. All right, we'll turn that right up and that vessel is doing its job. All right, so I'll give it 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it back together while I wait because um, I'm assuming it's okay and, uh, and I'll get back to you in 10 minutes. We're just below 1.5 bar. Obviously the temperature is much higher than it was. Uh, the customer, I had turned it previously down to less than that. I'm going to leave it in the dot there. That boiler is done. All right, so tips to stop your boiler breaking down due to pressure loss. Number one, check for leaks, because that will give you a pressure loss. Number two, notice when your pressure begins to fluctuate. If you notice it early, the safety valve on the boiler, the thing at the back on this one, won't start leaking. So if you notice that pressure early, get an engineer out, he can pump that vessel up. Number three, this is a tip, when you're recharging or pumping up an expansion vessel, you have to have an open point. You need to have the drain point open so that when you pump that up, the water can leave it. Otherwise you get a false reading on your gauge, as in the gauge that you're using to pump it up, and you won't put enough air in it, okay? A lot of engineers, newly, newbies, don't realize that. Number four, check it afterwards. Turn the boiler up, I mean even run it on max. Get it as hot as you can, as quick as you can. And check, you'll know if you fixed it. Now if you've done this, this is a big tip. If you've done this, and when you put this on and run it on max, this pressure goes sky high. The little copper pipe at the back, or the little flexible hose, which is more common, is blocked, okay? If you look at my uh, heat line caprice video that I made last year, I'll show you how to deal with a blocked expansion vessel pipe, okay? It's, <laughs> there are some really important tips in that video. If you get it wrong, you're gonna get absolutely filthy water all over a customer's house. Running sweet as a nut. Now it's definitely time to go because look at them clouds. Look at it, Whoa, it's ominous, absolutely ominous. Tip number one when dealing with expansion vessel problems or pressure losses, check your pressure more regular. Be aware of what's going on. If your pressure's going sky high, you've got an expansion vessel full. If you've got an expansion vessel full, it could be leaking out of your safety valve, okay? Check outside for the pipe that hooks back to the wall and make sure that's not leaking. That's tip number one. Tip number two, if your pressure is going sky high, if you can notice that before a problem, you can get it rectified easily. Tip number three, make sure the drain point is open. 
while you're pumping the expansion vessel. That way you can allow the excess water that's built up inside it to escape. Tip number four, check your Schrader valve. Make sure once you finish the job, you spray that with some sort of soapy water solution, leak detection fluid, something like that, to make sure that that is not leaking. Otherwise, you'll just be doing the same thing again in a couple of days. Okay, last but not least, tip number five, make sure you check it afterwards. You run your boiler up to a really nice and hot temperature to get maximum expansion. Make sure the expansion vessel can cope with maximum temperature. All right, I will catch you and see you on the next one.